That was Hans's catch of the day. We're just <laughs> nosing up into this cave. Hey, good day! Welcome back to another episode of Getting Back to Basics. My name's Az, this is my best mate Strick, and we're a few weeks into a trip through remote West Papua. We've been perched up in a village for the last few days, and we've got the opportunity to head out with one of our mates in a local boat to a really remote island he's been talking about. Yeah, but this island specifically is pretty crazy. So the last few days we've been hearing stories that have been passed down from the ancestors that this island, the currents around it are so crazy that it's been sinking boats for years and years. They believe the currents are caused by giant squid or giant octopus or kraken-like creatures. It's still very much believed today. Like there was a sighting literally a month ago where one of these creatures was seen. So needless to say, it's perked our interest. We're gonna get in the boat. We're gonna head out there. We're gonna get in the water and see what it's all about. See what's happening out there. Big day plan, mate. Let's get into it. We just spotted a big pod of dolphins up ahead here. They're all really, really tightly packed. I'm not sure if they're feeding or if there's something else going on here, but hopefully we can get closer for a bit of a better look. Oh, there's heaps of them. Oh, amazing. So Az has just got the drone in the air and he's saying there's at least 30 dolphins in this pod. It's a bit of a mega pod, really and they're just slowly cruising along the coast here. Now, these ones are pretty shy to swim with, so we've opted to stay out of the water and just get like a real bird's eye view. It's probably the best view we can get of them, but it's pretty amazing to see dolphins in such big numbers just straight off the coast here. It's a good start to the day. Just come around the corner here and got our first look at the island we're heading out to. The location of it gets us very excited. It's just out by itself, out in the deep ocean. What that's gonna do, of course, it's just gonna be all that big current out there is gonna be hitting that island, which is generally means it's a hot spot for big fish. So I can't wait to get out there. We're just <laughs> nosing up into this cave and you can hear, I think there's a heap of bats in here. Look at the bright orange coral growing here. It's amazing colors. And there's bats just scooting around all through here. The baby bats are up in the back of that cave there. And when they grow older, they move up and nest up at the top there. Oh, look at this. Oh, they're going to hit you in the head. Oh, it's some big ones. Look at the, oh, look, 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 look. Look, look, look. I thought they'd be little bats. These things are huge. Oh, they're big. Oh, here's one. Holy. That was awesome. Hans was just saying you can also swim through here and swim all the way out the other side. He said there's some big mangrove jack in there. So uh, if we don't have any luck out at the island, we might stop back here on the way through. I'd love to do that swim through. There she is, hundreds of meters deep all around it. It's this random rocky island right in the middle. But unfortunately the water looks like a really deep green uh, rather than a bluey clear color. But it might just be sort of the current on that side. We'll come around and fingers crossed we can find some cleaner water somewhere. Check it out. That little bay there, go and make a barbecue. We just got to get some fish first. Yeah, yeah. Protected side of the island. The other side's just fully open ocean and there's waves dumping, but here it's really calm and protected. Looks a little bit clearer as we're sort of making our way around this way. And there's some beautiful coral life. What's your first impressions, mate? Honestly amazed at like how much foliage, how much jungle, how many trees are growing out of this pure like limestone rock in the middle of the ocean. Oh, oh kingfisher. Oh, beautiful blue beautiful, kingfisher. Yeah, electric blue on the back kingfisher. Oh, oh there he goes, little kingfisher. It's a really special spot and I'm really keen to jump in the water and get a fish so we can have a barbecue on the island. The gnarly landscape here, you can see that current ripping around the corner there. As we poke the head around the corner, you can feel that wind and current racing here. Strick's just going to jump in now and check the current. Like anywhere where we jump in and dive, we want to be on the pressure edge of it. So wherever the current's hitting, that's where all the bait's going to be. So it's just going to jump in now and get a visibility check and a current check. What's the verdict, mate? Hey, there's plenty of fish life, like lots of big surgeon fish, but the current's doing the wrong thing. The viz isn't great, so we're gonna have to move elsewhere. We've come around the other side now. We've identified where the current's hitting on this other point here. So we're all gonna jump in. Strick's got the float out. We've got a flasher. 
Hans is jumping in as well. He's got his timber cannon. Let's do it, bro. Yes. Woo. Hopefully we can get a fish. I'll see you in there. Oh, it's a bit colder out here. Lunch spot. Lunch spot. We've just yeah, come just off the reef here, board. up into this like tiny little, it's only five meters wide, into a little inlet here. It's just been like a landslide. And we're gonna make a hook up one of these fish here for lunch. That was Hans's catch of the day. That's a really big Without hook. bluefin trevally. Yeah, he's got no barb on his spear. <laughs> just stoned it. <laughs> How you cook him up? Bacar. Bacar. Yeah. Grill? Yes, very good. Check out the roots coming down of this strangler fig here. All over the rock and then up there. Interesting to see everyone's got a slightly different way of cooking here. Hans has just taken the scales off, taken the guts out and put one long cut sort of straight down the, the length of the body to allow that heat to get in and cook the meat. And having it raised up on these uh, green wood that won't burn allows it to sort of cook evenly uh, without burning on the fire. See how it's just up above the, the actual flame itself. We've just cut up a few green leaves to go over the top of the fish just to hold all the heat in to finish them off. It should be only about 10 minutes off being done. Look at that mackerel's ready, mate. It's definitely ready. Go for it. <laughs> Brave the smoke and go for it, mate. Nice. Hans has already eaten the head. Yeah, the, he the head of the tail's gone missing. <laughs> Where'd the head go, Hans? Where'd the head? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> we got a little bit of rice as well. So we're just gonna have this fish. It's rice. Done. Lunch. Hans just asked, do you want salt with your fish? And we go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just giving it a dunked it. a dunk in salt. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> nice lunch is served. Let's get into it. Oh, smoke. Mary sea perch. Spanish, Spanish mackerel. mackerel. Beautiful. Get into it, mate. 
Oh wow. All right, there's the bowl. Bowl of rice. What do you want, mate? A bit of spano? Yeah, please. A bit of both? Yeah, a bit of both. Taste comparison. Get him on top there, mate. Rice and fish spring roll. Mong. That's one. <laughs> manga, we call manga. I know. <laughs> nice and salty. <laughs> hey, bro. Mmm. Very, very good. Enough to color, yeah. Mm. Doesn't get too much fresher than that, boys. Straight from the reef out the front. Cooked and served in maybe 30 minutes. That's uh, it's back to basics living for you. <laughs> hey! Follow my puggy. Good, yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, it's nice now. Yeah. She's glassed out. Yeah, beautiful. Back to home. Back to home. Wow, she's so glassy, calm in here, crystal clean. And even the coral coverage in here is incredible. Look at the current swirling here. Yeah. Uh, we've just come back to the back cave. I think we've got just enough time in the afternoon to jump in and do a quick swim. Uh, like we said before, apparently you can swim through this entire section and come out the other side as headland. So let's see how we go. Oh man, this is incredible. Oh, look at the bats. After all that, we didn't happen to see the Kraken, but we were happy to have speared a feed of fish, checked out some new area, and be back at camp now for Golden Hour. What a great day, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Dennis. From Makassi. So good. You want to see the, uh, the snake, the snake here. Yeah. Looks black, huh? Hans got bitten by a snake this morning here in the village and the kids the kids wanted to see where he got bitten on the hand. <laughs> How are you? Apa kabar? No high fives. No high fives. Yes. <laughs> Who's at the back there? Who's at the back there? <laughs> Enjoy the sunset. Matahari, yeah? Matahari. Yeah. Really beautiful sunset this afternoon. What kind of face was that? All the kids are just like harassing me to get photo photos of them. I think it's a huge novelty to have like technology around them. I definitely get the sense of that, which is a beautiful thing. And it's just awesome to see kids being kids, not glued to screens. Just like mucking around for the sunset, which is absolutely spectacular this afternoon. It's an amazing sunset. 